That's a little too bright. Oh, hi, I'm Dr. Pettis. I'm afraid you caught me adjusting my mitochondrial energy lamp here on a Saturday night. But I'm glad you stopped by because I wanted to talk with you about a few things that could relate to, relate to bright red lights that could cause a little stress. Or if we calm them down a little bit, a nice dull light like that might actually relax us a little bit. That's right, I'd like to talk a little bit about the autonomic nervous system. Oh, are we recording already? Sorry about that. We are gathered around the PowerPoint today to talk about the autonomic nervous system. Why? Because it will be on every dissection and every exam you have in anatomy class. So it's a topic you want to have the basics down as early as you can. It's going to have the biggest payoff for you, bang for the buck, on your exam questions. So I urge you to be the scholar in your class for the autonomic nervous system. And once you know it, you'll be teaching it to your friends and you'll know it better and better, and I swear to you, it will pay off. What will not pay off is not knowing the autonomic nervous system. So here we go. The nervous system is divided into the peripheral and the central nervous system. If we look at the peripheral, we know this from before, we can divide it into sensory and motor, and each of those can then be divided into somatic and visceral nervous system. Here this says autonomic nervous system, and that's what I tend to say. That's the same thing as the visceral motor system, so it depends which textbook you're looking at. But uh, for right now, we're going to say autonomic nervous system because it's really easy to write the abbreviations ANS. The autonomic nervous system, that's the motor visceral system, is divided into the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous systems. I'm going to assume you already know about that from your college and high school classes, fight or flight, rest and digest. A little refresher, um, I'm going to just show you with the somatic nervous system, that's your voluntary nervous system. That's not the topic, but I just want to give you context for contrast here. With the motor system, here's somatic, here are all the visceral divisions. With any motor system, the first neuron is found in the central nervous system, and that's what we see in tan here. You got that? This is the central nervous system. Out here to the right is the peripheral nervous system. So this is in the uh, spinal cord here, we're going to have that first motor neuron, it's going to send its axon out to the target organ, which is a, a voluntary muscle there. All right, that's context, that's not the autonomic nervous system. Coming down here, we see autonomic nervous system, now we're getting visceral, that's today's topic. And what we find is that it's a two neuron system, instead of singular like that one. So whenever I talk about the autonomic nervous system, you're going to be thinking about where I find that first neuron, and where I find that second neuron and how the axons connect. So where do you find the first and second neurons? And by the way, if you ever come up, you know, you're trying to retrace this and you only end up with one neuron, start over. If you end up with three, start over. It's always going to be two. So we have the first one in the central nervous system and the second one is in a ganglion. A ganglion, by definition, is a, a body of neurons or neuronal cell bodies together in the, that are part of the peripheral nervous system. So this is an autonomic ganglion, or specifically in this case, a sympathetic ganglion. So first neuron sends its first axon to the ganglion where it meets the second cell, which sends its second axon out to the target organ. Now I'm taking it easy on you right now using the words first and second. Later we're gonna be using the terms, this is the last time I'll ever use those words for this, I'll be saying preganglionic, that's what we call the first one, preganglionic neuron, preganglionic axon, here's the ganglion, but neuron here is called postganglionic neuron, postganglionic axon. Now we're talking about the sympathetic nervous system. So if I come up to you in lab and ask you about this, 
you would call this the preganglionic sympathetic neuron, the preganglionic sympathetic axon, the postganglionic sympathetic neuron, and a postganglionic sympathetic axon going to the target organ. I think that just this language and using it in association with this simple diagram is what can gain you many miles in the topic when we do it in class on Monday. Just get this terminology down, right? Preganglionic, postganglionic, sympathetic, parasympathetic. We're going to be using these together and throwing in a few more terms that complicate even, even further. So I'm just saying vocabulary is a great place to start because um, if you don't have it down, it can be very confusing. All right, same thing for the parasympathetic. Preganglionic, parasympathetic neuron. Preganglionic, parasympathetic axon. Here's a ganglion. Parasympathetic ganglion. This is the postganglionic parasympathetic neuron and the postganglionic parasympathetic axon. Now, I didn't just say all that so you could listen to me. I think you need to go back and say it again right now. I'll wait. All right, just hit pause. This is a more anatomical view of the autonomic nervous system. In red, we have sympathetic known for its fight and flight. And in blue, we have the parasympathetic, known for its rest and digest. Let's begin with the sympathetic. Once again, the first neuron is found in the central nervous system. Specifically, all these red ones you can see are in the spinal cord. More specifically, they're between T1 and L2. In everyone, we find the first sympathetic neuron in the spinal cord between T1 and L2. That's thoracic one and lumbar two. Therefore, another word, another name for this division is the thoracolumbar division. So the sympathetic nervous system is also the thoracolumbar nervous system. And I want you to use this term, embrace it. Using it will help you remember what you need to remember that this is found between T1 and L2 for the first neuron. Then there's this structure right here. We're going to learn a lot more about this, and you'll be using it often, you know, talking about it often. It's called the sympathetic trunk or the sympathetic chain ganglion. So, ganglia. So, each one of these lumps represents a ganglia or an accumulation of neuronal cell bodies that are joined by white matter or bundles of axons. So, they end up, um, you know, in illustrations, they look like a pearl necklace or Mardi Gras beads with a string connecting the beads. That's the sympathetic trunk or the chain of ganglia. So let's follow a, a, a pathway through this uh, whole, whole system. So we have the first neuron, sends its axon, leaves the central nervous system, follows the spinal nerve, it hops off the spinal nerve to enter the sympathetic trunk or the chain of ganglia. It could synapse with the second neuron, which send its, sends its dashed line second axon out to the target organ. So that's pretty simple. We have a neuron, axon goes to a ganglion, it synapses with a second neuron, axon goes to target organ. Now the next options are not that complicated if you just look at them. The other option is that the first neuron can send its axon into the chain and it can ascend and synapse at another level and still send that second axon out to the target. Another option, the first neuron could send its first axon out to the chain, and that axon could descend and synapse with a second neuron in a distant ganglia that sends its axon out to a target organ. So pretty simple. So far we have neurons that send their axons to the sympathetic trunk and synapse somewhere in that sympathetic trunk. You got it? All right, that's one part of the story. A completely separate part of the story that's also going to involve two neurons is one where we take, we follow a, we take a neuron, we follow its axon, and it enters the chain ganglia, but it bypasses. No synapse occurs there. So we're still on the first axon, 
that leaves the backside of that chain and goes to a distant, a different ganglia. In this case, we're looking at the celiac ganglion, which is over an artery you'll learn later, the celiac artery. So the celiac ganglion, where did my mouse go? There we go, the celiac ganglion right here. That's where we find the second neuron that sends its axon out to target organs. All right, all of the storylines I talk about where we have the um, axon that bypasses the trunk, all of those go to the prevertebral ganglia. That's plural, there are three of them. The celiac ganglion, the superior mesenteric ganglion, and here the inferior mesenteric ganglion. And they do so, these axons go through the chain, as I said, and they come out on the other side. And you can see this fabulous drawing here. You see several lines merging together. So these all are first uh, axons that merge together to form a nerve called the greater splanchnic nerve that goes to the ciliac ganglion. Very similarly, a few axons come out the backside and also form the, the lesser splanchnic nerve here and the least splanchnic nerve here. And these go to ganglia as well. But the ganglia they go to are in front of the vertebral column. They're called prevertebral ganglia. That means in ganglia that are in front of the vertebra. Now you know what another word is for the sympathetic chain here? It's beside the vertebra. We can call these the paravertebral ganglia or the ganglia that are beside the vertebra. Paravertebral ganglia. Very good. Paravertebral ganglia, prevertebral ganglia. Let's take a break for a moment and review what we've just gone over. Review the sympathetic nervous system and the alternate pathways for reaching the target organ. Remember, you're always gonna want two neurons and two exons. I want you to name them pre and post ganglionic neurons and exons and describe these different pathways for getting to the target organ. Do that and then we'll come back to talk about the parasympathetic nervous system.